Hello everyone, my name is Pixlrifts and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. Today we are going to go exploring. Before we do that, I'm going to breed up some of the sheep and the cows just to make sure we have an adequate supply of these when we come back. And I'm going to do something that a lot of folks in the comments have pointed out, rightly suggested I should do, and that's move this chest away from the sheep pen. Because while there don't seem to be any spawning around here, wolves are a thing in Minecraft and can sometimes go after the sheep if they have a way into the pen. They can't use the carpet to hop over the fence like we can, but moving the chest away from the sheep ensures at least that they will be safe from any potential wolf attacks. You'll notice that we have pink sheep in here now from breeding the red and the white sheep together. We are actually going to shear a couple of the sheep by crafting two iron into a set of shears. Then by right clicking on the sheep with the shears we can get ourselves some wool and that's going to get us another bed that we can use while we're traveling so we can leave our original bed here. I'm also going to use three iron and craft that into a bucket which we can use to move water sources around. We're not going to touch any of the water on this mountain since it's flowing down in these beautiful waterfalls but we will be able to collect some water and take it with us. While we're around the cows I'll also show you that you can collect milk from cows that's used in crafting recipes and can be used to dispel potion effects like poison. So if you happen to have been poisoned by a witch throwing a potion at you or been stung by a bee while you're near your base a bucket of milk can quickly cure that effect before it becomes dangerous. Now back at the house briefly we're going to craft ourselves a few things. We're going to break down a bunch of planks, turn those into a boat, we'll craft ourselves another bed for travel use, and I'm also going to make a chest because combining a chest with a boat in a crafting interface will get you a boat with chest. But before we venture out onto the water we're going to explore a little over land because the purpose of exploring today is to find more materials we can use to build a slightly more impressive house than this wooden tent that we've started with. And rather than disturb any of the beautiful cherry trees on top of our home mountain, I'm going to go a little further afield to a valley I saw just beyond this forest which has cherry trees growing in it as well. I also want to explore a little more of the landscape around here since I haven't seen too much of it so far and there are a couple of cherry trees up there that look ripe for the picking. As night falls we're going to pop down our bed and sleep so that we don't have to worry about mobs spawning but bear in mind this does reset our spawn point to this bed and once we break it our spawn point gets reset to the world spawn point where we first started so if we end up dying we're going to have to make the trek back home. It looks like a zombie has spawned during the day, probably just because of the shade provided by this tree. So after dispatching the zombie, we're going to take this tree down and hopefully we don't run into too many more shady spots. As we destroy the trunk of this tree, we're going to look for a few cherry saplings dropping from the leaves so that we can replant those and grow the cherry trees renewably at home. But one of the other things we can do, since the leaves are so pretty by themselves, is equip our shears and break some of the blocks of the tree with the shears. This also allows us to see if any logs are still hidden in the canopy of the tree which would prevent the leaves from naturally decaying and despawning and dropping items. I'm going to shear the rest of these leaves just to get them away from connecting to any other leaf blocks since any of the logs of the surrounding trees can sustain these leaf blocks and prevent them from decaying. We can also punch some of these flowers growing on the ground to get pink petals which can be replaced in different formations elsewhere in the world. We'll just need a few of these as we should be able to regrow them with bone meal later. With a full stack of cherry leaves, some cherry logs and a bunch of of saplings we can replant, we're going to move on from this area, leaving that one cherry tree taken down, but the rest of them standing. And after a quick look around at the rest of the landscape, it looks like the only other trees growing here are oak and birch, so we're going to have to go further afield if we want to find some other biomes with other types of trees. And that's where this chest boat will come in handy, because traveling by water is a great way to find other biomes. We're going to pop this boat down on the river, we're going to right click it to get in, and just by pressing forward and moving normally, we can row around. And already we start to see the snowy landscape of a mountain grove coming into view on this side. That is going to have some spruce trees for us. We'll park the chest boat over here, we'll get out by crouching, and then we'll start climbing this mountain in search of those spruce trees. Watch your step when you get into a grove biome, because this is another place you will find powdered snow blocks forming, but if you brought your leather boots you should be fine. Unfortunately it looks like that tree didn't drop any spruce saplings for us. It is rare, but it can happen, so we'll have to take down another tree and see if this one gives us a little better luck. No saplings from that one either, gosh, <laughs> we're gonna have to go deeper into the grove for this. this tree 
tree looks like it has a lot more leaves, so let's try taking this one out from the top down. If you want to speed up the process, you can break the leaves manually, and don't worry, it has just as much chance of dropping a sapling if you break the leaf manually, versus letting the leaves decay naturally. There finally is our first spruce tree sapling. It even dropped a second sapling for us, so that doubles our chances of being able to regrow and farm these trees back at the house. Returning to our chest boat, we can get in the boat and open our inventory to access the boat inventory. Alternatively, if you're standing on land, you can crouch and right click on the boat. I'm going to start stashing all of the different wood types and their saplings in this chest so we can kind of mark off which ones we have along the way. And I didn't gather any spruce leaves, but don't worry, we can always gather those from the trees once we're farming them reliably. And just down the coast from that grove, we found another place I was hoping to find. This is a jungle biome. Not only does it have these large jungle trees with a 2x2 two two trunk, it also has some bamboo. And bamboo, while it existed in the game before, has recently been redeveloped into a whole new set of wood that you can actually craft instead of farming it the way you do with normal trees. The best tool for removing bamboo is a sword, a single tap should allow the bamboo cane to fall, and we can grab all of the individual pieces of bamboo that drop out of that. Bamboo can be planted on dirt in the same way that tree saplings can, but it will grow into a stalk from a single shoot, and so we end up farming bamboo slightly differently. There are a couple of other patches of bamboo in this jungle though, we're going to leave a couple of them around since they will be able to regrow from a single stalk, and a baby ocelot and a parrot are hanging out here, and one of the ocelots Ocelot has just killed a chicken nearby, so waste not want not I'm gonna grab that. For some reason, ocelots and parrots can coexist quite happily, but they really go after the chickens if they're around. We will return to talk about both of these mobs in future, but for now, let's take a look at what else the jungle has to offer. Some of these trees will have cocoa bean pods growing on them, and breaking those allows you to harvest cocoa beans, which can be crafted into cookies, but are also a source of brown dye. So that's another step along the path to having every single color of sheep. And it looks like a thunderstorm may be happening, actually. The sky has darkened quite considerably, so I'm going to take this opportunity to sleep. Since thunderstorms are situations in which hostile mobs can start to spawn on the surface, you can sleep through them if you don't want to deal with that. And let's take down this tree here and hope it drops a few jungle saplings for us. When you look for jungle saplings, ideally you want to return home with at least four of them. Not only because they can be grown in a 2x2 two two formation to grow one of these larger trees, which yield a lot more wood and more sapling drops from the leaves, but also because jungle trees are the only tree which has a reduced drop rate in the number of saplings you get from leaves. You have about half the chance to get a jungle sapling from one of the leaves of these trees as you do from any of the others, which is surprising given how difficult it was to get the saplings from the spruce trees. But we've got two jungle saplings. I think we'll take down another one of these small trees and hopefully we get enough from that to regrow them at home. You'll also notice that jungle trees are covered in vines, which you can climb as long as they're not <laughs> disappearing in front of you, but you can either walk into them and simply hold the forward button to walk up, or alternatively, if they're dangling from the edge of a tree, you can hold the jump button. Vines can also be harvested with shears. If we break the block using shears, we'll obtain one piece of vine, and those can regrow if they're attached to the side of something as well. Thankfully, we were able to get all the saplings we needed, so we're returning home with some jungle logs, some saplings, some vines, some bamboo, and a bunch of cocoa beans. While we're here, it's also worth noting that on the opposite shore is a sparse jungle biome, which are different to the dense jungle biomes in the sense that the trees are a lot more spread out, allowing you to more easily clear the area if you decide to build here. You will also occasionally find bamboo jungle variants, which have a lot more bamboo growing densely packed together, unlike the occasional bamboo stalks we found in this jungle. And on the edge of this jungle as I was about to leave, we've also discovered some melons. We're going to use an axe to harvest those, they turn into melon slices, and those can be broken down into seeds that will allow you to regrow melons at home in your crop fields. We'll gather up a couple more of those as well, just so we have a nice amount of slices. If you have nine slices and a 3x3 crafting interface, you can even turn them back into a full melon block. We are getting very lucky today. A stone's throw away from the jungle biome, we have stumbled across a savanna, which contains acacia wood. These are tall, rangy trees with a bright orange wood color, so we're going to take some of the logs from this. We might have to pillar up a couple of times to get those last two logs and allow the leaves to decay, but once the saplings start to fall, we will be able to farm acacia 
miniature trees back at home as well. You'll also notice that the grass color changes quite significantly between this plains biome and the savanna biome. It's a lot drier, a lot yellower, and the leaves change color to match their surroundings. You can also see on the edges of the leaves here that the acacia tree leaf color gets a little greener as it approaches the border of this plains biome. You'll find occasional oak trees growing here as well, and their leaf color is very different to the leaf color back in our home forest. That is simply a feature of how most leaf blocks work in Minecraft. There are a few exceptions, like birch leaves, spruce leaves, and azalea leaves, which are actually kind of a special case. We haven't found any of those yet. Still, we got a few acacia tree saplings and a bunch of wood out of that, so we can return to our chest boat, open up the inventory, and deposit the acacia logs and acacia saplings. You won't get anything else from those trees aside from sticks. I should also, while I'm here surrounded by abundant water, fill up my water bucket so that we've got that for the future. Now, one thing that the jungle and that savanna have in common is that they are both warm biomes, and one more of our wood types comes from another type of warm biome, the mangrove swamp. So I'm going to search around the perimeter of these warm biomes in the hope that one of those has generated alongside these. On the way, we will get to see the bamboo jungle variant that I talked about previously, because man, there's a lot of bamboo here. In fact, I might quickly stop and swipe a few of these stalks just so I can have a lot more bamboo to build with instantly instead of having to wait for it to regrow back at home. Just by chopping down a couple of those plants, we've gained more than a stack of materials, so bamboo really does come in large quantities. And just around the corner, we have found yet another incredible find. This is an azalea tree. The notable thing about this one is that the wood attached to it is actually oak wood. <laughs> These are the oak logs that you'll find growing in normal oak trees. It's just that they generate with different style of leaves. And just like other trees, if you chop down all of the logs holding up the tree, the leaves will begin to decay and they will drop azalea bushes, which are kind of similar to saplings, but they come in two different varieties. The normal ones that look like this and the flowering ones that have these purple flowers attached to them. They're also the only sapling that has collision you can't walk through them the way you can the other saplings you've planted. They actually act more like a solid block. And they're the only tree type that you have to grow with bone meal instead of just allowing it to grow naturally on whatever dirt it's planted on. Last of all, the presence of an azalea tree here actually signposts that below this terrain, there is a lush cave biome. And we'll talk about lush caves in a future episode, but they're really quite exciting to explore. In the meantime, I'm going to take down the remainder of these leaves. And don't worry if you don't get a flowering azalea shrub from this, you will probably get one when you replant and regrow these trees at home. For now, we're going to tuck our azalea shrubs in this chest boat and enjoy the fact that we got a little extra oak wood. But it looks like the river has run out in this direction and I didn't much fancy going into that cave with all of my stuff. So we're going to try and find another waterway that will hopefully take us closer to a mangrove swamp. Well, unfortunately, I haven't found a way through these warm biomes to the other side. There is a substantial ocean over there, and there are a few other landmarks around, like a ruined nether portal and an acacia savanna village, but I'm not going to worry too much about those right now. We'll come back to them in future episodes. Instead, I found a thin part here that I can cut a channel through. We're going to make sure this is two blocks wide so that the boat can fit through and that there aren't any blocks at head height that are going to collide with us. And this seems like a good time to talk about water physics, because if the boat starts to float on in here, the water will slowly diminish until it reaches this point here and the water kind of dries up entirely. But with a bucket of water, we can actually replenish this simply by moving two blocks over and placing another water source. This will slowly start to fill up the water in this area, thanks to the fact that two water sources on neighboring blocks will create a third water source in between them. By systematically placing water along this channel, we can fill the entire thing up until it looks like there is no more flowing water left. Then when we remove these last two blocks, the water should fill in, allowing us to simply row our boat through this canal. And we can wave farewell to this village as we continue on our journey. Since we grabbed some melons from that jungle biome earlier, I simply cannot ignore the bright orange pumpkins sat there on this savanna shore. In fact, this whole pumpkin patch seems to be sort of waterlogged. So how about we grab all of them? From that, we got 14 pumpkins. We can put those in our chest boat as well. Those will break down into seeds just like the melon slices do, allowing us to replant pumpkins and farm them renewably back at our farm. And now we are rowing into some interesting territory indeed. We have found ourselves in a Badlands biome. I'll give you the coordinates for this one really quick. That is around negative 2000, positive 1500. And this is a very cool find. And I know we did a video where we looked for the map of this seed, but I honestly haven't been back to that map since, and finding a lot of these biomes has been a happy accident. 
The one thing I did know was here was a desert biome somewhere in this vicinity, and I am hoping that there's a mangrove swamp somewhere nearby. Unfortunately, the waterway ends here, so I'm going to very quickly take a screenshot of the coordinates of my chest boat, that way I can return to it later, and we'll continue this trek on foot, noting things like the cacti that spawn around us. And the fact that on the cliff over there is a desert village, something we will be returning to sometime in the near future. There is also an abandoned mineshaft here as part of the mesa, including some spawners on the surface and some minecarts and a few other things, but I'm going to stick to my plan for this episode. We are looking specifically for the mangrove swamp biome so that we can acquire some mangrove wood. And there, just on the edge of the desert cliff there, I think I see some. We're going to ignore the fact that there is a desert well here, although I might take the coordinates of that as well, since that's going to be useful for our explorations of archaeology. And we are going to climb the sandy dune of a desert to the welcome site of this mangrove tree growing on the edge of the swamp. Once you get into them, mangrove swamps are lush, dense places covered in this mud block with roots dangling down from the trees that are supported above the floor here. And you'll notice that the trees have mangrove propagules dangling from them. Mangrove propagules actually grow in stages. So you'll see the beginnings of one right here at the center of our screen above the crosshair. And on the left here, you'll see some examples of fully grown ones. They sort of look like Yoda's lightsaber is how I've always thought of them. So we'll collect a couple of those, take those with us, and those will be useful for regrowing mangrove trees back at our home base. Once we've slept for the night here, we will isolate one of these mangrove trees that is near the edge here, and we will try and take it down. They generate with a lot of leaves though, so you're probably better off starting from the top of some of these and digging your way through the canopy to get to the logs, which are this beautiful, rich red color. We will gather some of the leaves as well, also to make sure that there are no logs hiding in the canopy, because these trees tend to generate logs at an angle they can be kind of tricky to take down sometimes. We will also collect some of the mangrove roots that grow as part of the tree. Those can even grow down into the mud, becoming muddy mangrove roots, and we'll take a couple of samples of the mud home as well. You'll also find vines growing on these trees, like the jungle trees, those can be harvested using shears. But overall, I'm very happy with that. We were able to find a mangrove swamp biome, and we've got a couple of mangrove propagules we can replant to grow the trees renewably at home. On returning to our chest boat, we can pop all of our mangrove supplies in here alongside the logs. We'll put the roots there, we'll put the muddy roots, the mud, and we'll add the vines to our collection. We even collected some moss carpet from the roots of those mangrove trees. And the only thing we have left to find is a dark oak forest. We will definitely be back here though, since there are a lot of exciting things to be found in deserts these days. Well, having retraced my steps, I've managed to make it back to the backside of our Cherry Mountain, and our home should be just over there. So we can park the chest boat over there if we want to, but I'm interested in exploring the back of this area, not least because I've just noticed it has this incredible cave right here by the ocean. Oh my, I think we can do something with that. I think we can turn that into some kind of pirate grotto. It seems like there are also some ocean ruins back here, so somebody has clearly tried to turn it into a pirate grotto before. And yeah, we can just row straight in here like it's a garage for some big boats. Well, that's awesome. Well, I'm going to keep looking around very briefly in this general area because there are a few forests over here, and while dark forests aren't guaranteed to generate next to forest biomes, I think it's probably our best shot at finding dark oak trees before we wrap up this episode. Once again, there are some ruined nether portals nearby, and I've seen a bunch of other structures as I have traveled, so I'm looking forward to going back and exploring some of those. But I'm not seeing any dark oak wood, so I'm going to return to the chest boat and continue looking. Well, after a long search by sea, I ended up giving up for the moment and taking a bit of a trek over land. And while I haven't found a dark forest, I have found another beautiful cherry grove biome over here. This is at negative 1100, negative 1730, or at least my view of it from here is. The biome itself is probably a little bit further north. But if you wanted a larger cherry grove to build your base in, then that is going to be it. Now, while I could be searching for a dark oak forest using chunk base and just taking a look at the seed map and seeing where the biomes are, I am having a lot of fun exploring this world a bit more organically, seeing what the world has to offer from the ground level. But even if we don't find a dark forest at this point, I'm really happy with the progress we made today. We found a lot of different wood types. That's going to give us a ton of options for our first house. But as we can see, a 
lot of this world is covered in forests, which means plenty of building material if you don't have the time or the patience to chop down a bunch of trees that you've grown yourselves from saplings. At this point though, I am basically out of food, and while I could scrounge for some food in the wilderness here and cook it with a furnace that I craft from local materials, I think it's probably a good idea to just head back to the chest boat. We'll just drop off everything that we've gathered so far, and we'll go looking for a dark oak forest another day. Once your hunger bar runs down to just three of the little ham shank icons, you'll find yourself unable to sprint, which is kind of a dire situation to be in, especially if there are hostile creatures around. So always a good idea to keep a good supply of food for you, and unfortunately I didn't bring enough for this trip. Luckily, rowing a boat consumes no hunger and is a pretty fast way to travel, so let's make a beeline for home. Tempting as it is to park my chest boat in the pirate grotto, I am going to make my way up through this slope here where it's nice and open. And it's time for the one disadvantage of chest boats, we need to unpack all of the contents of the chest boat in order to take them with us. And we could just break the boat and have all of the contents spill out, but they would be left floating on the surface if we couldn't carry them in the space in our inventory, which right now I don't think we quite have enough space. So I'm going to grab as much of this as I can carry, we're going to bring all of that with us, we'll come back for the mud, the azalea and the chicken bits. And with the sun still fairly high in the sky, I'm going to try and head home and grab something to eat. Something tells me the raw chicken diet isn't what I want to be on. In fact, let's grab some of the surplus wheat from this chest and let's make ourselves a little bread so that we have an easier time sprinting to our house. Oh, especially since it started raining. <laughs> All right, let's get inside. All right, the rain has cleared up. We have a lot of stuff to drop off here and something tells me we're going to need a third chest inside of the house. We'll break down some of our oak wood into planks since the chest can be made out of any wood type and it will always look the same. So we might as well continue using the wood that we've been using this whole time. In fact, now is probably a good time to craft a second chest and place them side by side next to each other so that they form a double chest with twice the inventory space. And in here we're going to organize all of the different wood types that we have found today. We've got spruce logs, we've got jungle logs, acacia, we don't have dark oak yet, we have mangrove here, we have cherry right there, and we also have bamboo. Since there are nine wood types available to us in the overworld now, and there are nine columns in a chest inventory like this, we can arrange them like so and see all the different products that accompany them as well. We'll put the melons and the pumpkins next to our other crops and we can replant those in an upcoming episode. Let's grab a little bit more food and let's return to our chest boat. This time around I'm going to break the boat with my axe and you'll notice all the items kind of pop out of it like so. We can collect up those items including the chest boat itself and we'll return to the house. On the way, just for the sake of being a completionist, we're going to take down a birch tree as well since I didn't have any of that in storage. So we're going to add azalea underneath the oak logs since those produce oak wood. We're going to add birch in there along with the saplings. We do have some oak saplings somewhere, although I think I might have planted a great deal of them. I recognize that the bamboo doesn't really look like wood yet, but once you have access to a crafting table, you can convert that into a block of bamboo by placing it in a 9x9. Nine nine. From there it acts like a normal wood type and can be broken down into bamboo planks, except you'll find you get fewer of these than you do from a normal log. That is because bamboo can also be turned into sticks. If you put two of it in the inventory you get a single stick, and the game makers wanted to make sure that they balanced the amount of sticks you could get out of a block of bamboo, considering that nine pieces of bamboo go into making it. So the block of bamboo, effectively the bamboo log, can go up there along with the other logs of the the other wood types. But you know what, the completionist in me is not happy with leaving this slot here blank, so I'm going to go and do a bit more exploring and we'll see if we can come back with a dark oak forest. There we go, that really did not take long at all. I decided to go with the only direction I hadn't really travelled, which was east, towards the rising sun. I spotted this river that I decided to row down to save myself losing a little bit of hunger, and would you look at that, there's a dark oak forest really close by actually. This is <laughs> only about 500 blocks from my front door. You will spot dark forests by the fact that there are occasional giant mushrooms poking through the surface, red and brown mushrooms can be found here, but there are also these large two by two trunk trees. We're going to be taking down the entirety of one of these trees as usual so that the leaves can start to decay and once again we want to make sure we bring home four saplings. For a different reason than the jungle trees this time though, dark oak trees can only be grown in two by two formations. You do not find any one block wide dark oak trees. 
growing naturally in the world. You can only ever find them in 2x2s and regrow them in 2x2s. Luckily for us, the sapling drop rate on these trees is fairly normal, so we'll take down one or two of the trees and we should have enough saplings to start farming them at home. There we go, already got four saplings out of this tree, and you'll find that they occasionally drop apples as well, the same way regular oak trees do. And if you're wondering why oak trees were chosen to drop apples, I don't really know, it's just that there aren't any apple trees in the game. There we go, we've got six dark oak saplings, so that's four to replant the tree, two in case it only drops two when we replant it and to harvest the leaves again, and we've got a decent amount of dark oak wood, so we can add that to our collection. So I'm gonna row back down the river, hop over the mountain, and we can end our episode there. And here here we go, we finally get to put the dark oak saplings in there and look at this beautiful range of wood colours we have available to us. In the next episode we might even turn some of them into a house, but for now that's where we're going to leave this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you've enjoyed searching the world with me for all of these different wood types and hopefully you found a bunch of them yourselves. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care, bye for now.